Welcome back to TSSA Talks. This is Brian Johnson coming to you from the Exit Inn. They are our partners along with Tennessee State Soccer Association in this TSSA Talks video series. We're excited to be back for part three of our interview with Simone Charlie. Uh, Simone, thanks so much for joining us. We're excited to have you. <laughs> thanks for having me. All right, so we've gone through your career from growing up to you know being a, a star in Alabama. You're interesting recruiting journey and your your path to college at Vanderbilt and now going and becoming a pro and now in ending your second season coming up here with the Portland Thorns and all the things that are exciting and coming up in women's soccer we mentioned Louisville Kentucky I would be remiss we're, we're filming this on a day where social justice comes right back to the forefront to the headline to the front page a place it shouldn't be leaving that just because you know, the television crews aren't showing. It doesn't mean protests aren't happening every day across our country. Um, we're really interested in your perspective as a black woman, as a young black woman, with all the things that we've seen going on in our world just this year. And this is nothing that's new this year. What seems to be new this year, again, I don't know much more about this than I do about track. I, I experience it only through my lens. But these are not new things, but the fact that they're being videotaped more often are new things. So there have been several watershed moments in our country for this year. You know, tell me the ones that have been the most impactful for you, and how are you processing what's going on in our world through the lens that you have with soccer only being a small portion of that lens? Yeah, um, I would say for me, it's definitely been a difficult few months um I think just with everything going on I know how I think you kind of hinted at this but it's not really new it's something I feel like we've been aware of but now people are starting to not just notice it but believe it and I think for me that's something that has been that I've been trying to process a little bit I think of like with George Floyd and the momentum behind that and Breonna Taylor and now there's more momentum behind that after hearing the announcement. Um, I feel like for me, it's, it's, I'm proud. I don't think proud is the right word. I am glad that people are, more willing to understand and more willing to listen but there is some there's still a little bit of frustration there because it does feel like we've been saying this for a while and it's people are now just starting to believe you and so it's me I'm still working through those emotions and it's an interesting balance I think of the racial reckoning that's happening in the U.S. I hope that the momentum can continue and that people that this doesn't just be a phase and that people aren't just oh okay I'll learn about it and I'll educate myself and do all the, do all the things for a moment and then we have an, have to have another watershed moment or something else has to happen so yeah I, I think it's a it's a lot that you're describing there that for to have to process this again from your and it will help us understand from your background growing up has has soccer been a place where you felt equality has, or have there been moments where our sport has let you down we, we, just as a, as a young black woman growing up as a young adult in Alabama, growing up through your college years here in Nashville, Tennessee, how, again, no more specifics than you care to share, but, but have, 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 is this something you've experienced personally regularly that shapes your views on the things that are going on? Yeah. I think for me, running track and playing soccer has kind of given me a unique experience because growing up, when I ran track, the majority of my team was black. And whereas when I played soccer, I was normally one of the only black girls on my team. And so I think just having two very different environments <laughs> to maneuver through um, has definitely kind of given me a different perspective. Um, I would say when you're asking about how soccer influences how I see things, um, well, I just think of 
growing up in Alabama and kind of always being one of the only black girls on my team, I think I've always, I, I recognized it. I noticed, and I definitely would feel different than a lot of my teammates. Um, but I also think just in soccer in general, um, one thing that I've noticed that I appreciate, I think Crystal Dunn actually brought this up that I think would be a great commentary. And I think that's something that we could work on in soccer going forward. But I think a lot of times when it comes to black female athletes, it's pretty easy to lump them into the category of, oh, she's just really fast or, oh, she's just really athletic. And people don't really talk about soccer. Oh, she has a high soccer IQ or that she's technical, like she's a very technical player. And so I definitely, I would say that's something I've noticed as well, just throughout soccer. And I think that that's something that we can definitely grow in as a soccer community is not putting players in a box and um, highlighting other things that athletes are good at and not just limiting black players to being fast or powerful or athletes, but are you, are you a smart player? Are you technically gifted? Have you put in that technical work? So I think that that's definitely something I think that as a soccer community, we should grow in. I think that's really astute and really important for people to take a look at the words we choose, the way we choose to define an athlete, the way we choose to define a protest. Is it a protest or is it a riot? I mean, the, the, the real words that you choose yeah. when you're describing a situation. And I, I think it, for you to take it to the point of, as a further example, as an athlete, that it's really, the words do have power. Intentional words have power, but even unintentional words can have power too. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's, a, it, it's an interesting place that we find ourselves where, like you said, this we want this to be something that we can create change. I mean, you you so from my from I, I want to make sure I understand though. You you feel like soccer while people haven't there haven't been as many people who looked like you as a part of your teams. Soccer has been welcoming to you consistently. Not to say that you haven't had some some less than positive experiences through soccer when when, when in regards to race, but has soccer been welcoming to you and and to take it one step further what do we need to do to make it be more welcoming to more people like you mm, as i like that question um i would say yes soccer has been welcoming to me um i would say i feel like more so now i would feel like more so at the pro level because I feel like a lot of our teammates, or at least even with what's going on in the world right now, we as a team have, every week we have conversation, we have our, during recovery, it's our race conversation. <laughs> every week, that's like what we do. Recovery race conversation? <laughs> yeah, essentially. An ice um, bath, and let's talk about racism. I love it. That's, it's um, someone's uh, like, We'll send a podcast or people are reading a book and you have to read it by our recovery day, uh, which is normally like the day after a game. And then as we roll out, that's our time to discuss it. <laughs> and like, um, And so I, I really have felt that support with the Thorns right now. Um, I would say in college as well. Um, I would, we didn't really address the problems as much but I would say I, it was a welcoming atmosphere for me. Um, but I would say going forward as a sport, I think we need to have more conversations about it. And I would love to see more diversity in soccer because I feel like U.S. soccer is very white, whereas soccer globally is a lot more diverse. And so I think that that is definitely something that needs to change. I think you really have said it so well. I, I, I dream that a young lady in Hoover, Alabama, or Franklin, Tennessee, where I grew up, is going to turn on an NWSL game this summer and is going to see you play for the Thorns, is going to see Crystal Dunn, who 
my daughter had the opportunity during She Believes to walk out with a player and Aww. Crystal was the player that she got to walk out with. Like I, the pictures of my daughter and Crystal Dunn are like near and dear to my heart. Like, but like could watch you, could watch Crystal. But then when they come out to, they go, okay, I, I want to, I see somebody that's like me. I want to come out and be a part of soccer. Now I want to give soccer a chance. But when they come out, we've got to make sure that the environments they come out to make them feel welcome and make them feel a part. And that's something I, I hope we do, but we've got to find ways to do more and do better. I think even just more diversity within soccer is what helps it also feel more welcoming because I think- Outside of just players just, too, right? Not outside. just players too, right? But like diversity in terms yes, of, of the team officials that you see. Exactly, the coaches, within the trainers, coaching the referees. Staff, trainers, exactly. Because I do think there is an element like of where of understanding that white people will just not have of black people. And I think just being able to be around people that will understand your experience, that is what helps a, you have a more welcoming environment because you're around people who understand the things that you go through that maybe your white peers don't necessarily go through. And so I think just having diversity in soccer, not just on your team, but seeing coaches and people in leadership positions and things like that. Not only does that give you an idea of things that you can aspire to because you realize like, oh, someone who looks like me is president of this club or a coach at this club, but also it just allows the environment to be more welcoming because you understand that there's people here who experience this, the same things that you do a very unique experience that you have here in the U.S. Man, that's, that's really tremendously well said, Simone. I love your, your passion about it, but just your eloquence is, uh, is inspiring. So as we wrap up here, um, you, you've been so gracious to make time for us. Uh, you know, I know Tennessee has been only a small part of your journey so far, but we're, we're really proud of, of that part of your journey. Um, you know, as it continues we, we remain proud of you here. As we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to leave, you know, the people who are going to come and watch this, the people who are going to really hopefully come from this and have to have a moment of thought and reflection uh, as they move forward? Is, is there maybe a parting shot you've got for everybody as we talk about moving collectively together towards a better future? Yeah, I feel like just with everything going on, a lot of times people feel overwhelmed and just kind of feel like, okay, we realize there's a problem. Where do I start? I don't know what to do. And are almost kind of frozen and just being overwhelmed with everything. And I would just uh, advise people just to first start with yourself. Just learn more. Edu you know, people are saying educate yourself, but just read books, get different perspectives, do research. And then once you start to learn more, start educating your community, reach out to your friends, reach out to your parents and start having those conversations. Because I think that's the biggest thing that needs to happen right now is have those conversations and confront the, the things that make people uncomfortable because they're there regardless of whether or not we decide to talk about it. And so it's not until we address the issue that things will change. So I think just first starting with yourself and then having the boldness to have those hard conversations with the people around you. I, I, I can't tie a better bow on it than that, Simone. I am proud <laughs> of, I'm proud of this partnership with Tennessee State Soccer Association and the Exit In. I'm proud we're able to bring voices like yours and to amplify them and to shine a light on the bright, uh, charismatic emboldened future that you paint such a beautiful picture of i i'm, I'm looking forward to that day I, I hope tomorrow is one step closer to that day i hope the next day is one step closer to that day and i hope the next time we get a chance to see you to you know have you be a part of our community to you know have you back to talk more you know i hope we can all feel like we're another couple of steps towards that day that we all want to see down the road. So on behalf of Tennessee State Soccer Association, on behalf of the folks here at the Exit Inn, for all of you out there who've come in and listened to this interview with Simone, 
part three. Oh, man, I hope you didn't give up after part two because this is really good stuff. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of you. I'm happy for you to be a part of our family moving forward. Simone, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. That's all today for TSSA Talks.